Ladies and gentlemen, there's a new snapshot out for Minecraft Java Edition 1.17, the Keys and Cliffs update. Snapshot 21W10A. I've already published a gameplay changes video. You can see that up in the iCard on the video right now or in the video description. This video is going to be about all the technical changes, specifically a lot about shaders in resource packs and a boatload of new custom world generation changes. I do suggest that you watch the gameplay video first to get a view of how all these things are used in vanilla. Anyway, my name is Slice Lime and I'm here to guide you through all the technical changes in this version. Let's get into it starting with rendering in shaders, surprisingly. Rendering in the game is now using the OpenGL 3.2 core profile. What does that mean? That means that all fixed function rendering has been replaced with shader based rendering. Shaders are now included for all supported render state. All of these shaders except the Blit shader can also be replaced in resource packs. For now, replacing these shaders is not officially supported. And what that means is that the format and the way any of this works could change for a future version. Consider this just as experimental as all of the custom world generation stuff. The current rendering engine uses a system similar to the post-processing shader pipeline that was all already there. There are some differences between the systems that cater to the slightly different requirements though. So with that said, let's get into resource packs because those shaders can be replaced by resource packs. Inside of the shaders folder in the Minecraft namespace, there are now two new folders. They are core and include. The core folder contains all of the core rendering functionality and the include folder contains included files. Those included files are included using a hash moj underscore include meta command in the shader files. That is a sort of preprocessor command used to reuse fragments of code. Now I am not a shader wizard and there is far too much stuff to go through in this, but I will give you pointers to some resources. There are example resource packs by Salifian, one of the developers. I will leave a link to that in the video description. That includes this blustery day resource pack. There's a list of the block types using different render types that was posted by another of the developers, Bach. The community is also working on a shared document of which shader does what in the game. I'll put a link to that in the video description as well. And the Minecraft Commands Discord is a very good place to look for community development on this stuff. One other relevant change for resource packs, the Spyglass now has two textures. They are spyglass.png, which is now for the inventory icon only, and spyglass underscore model.png for the held item. And there's also a separate model for this, it is called spyglass in hand.json in the models slash item folder. There is also a new file in the misc subfolder that is simply called white.png. It is, unsurprisingly, entirely white. Let's talk about commands. The give command has a new limitation. It can now only give up to 100 stacks of items in a single invocation of the command. The number of items in the stack doesn't matter, it's 100 stacks. That means you can give 6400 stone in one command or 100 iron swords in a command. A number of problems have been fixed with inventory not syncing up properly when using commands, especially the clear command. And a bunch of stability fixes have been done to the set block and spawn point commands that could be used to crash the game. Data changes in this version. Slimes have a new maximum limit for size. They can now only be set to 128th size at the most. Glow squid entity data now properly saves. It didn't save at all in the previous snapshot. And the block state lit of signs is no longer a block state. It is now included in the block entity data instead. A single bug fix for structures. There was a bug that meant structure blocks did not work below y equals zero that is fixed in this version. Let's talk about tags. The block tag azalea log replaceable has been removed. Instead, there is a new block tag called lush ground replaceable. Most flower and plant blocks have also been removed from the lush plants replaceable tag and there are new block and item tags for the remaining ore types that were added as deep slate ores in this version. That is coal ores, emerald ores, and copper ores. 
Now, for the rest of this video, we're going to go through custom world generation changes and, oh boy, are there custom world generation changes. Let's start out softly with fossils. Fossil features are now configurable. They have a configuration consisting of fossil structure and overlay structure. Both of those are lists of resource names for the structures in question. They must contain something and the sizes of the lists must match. That is because the fossil will pick an index and then use the same index in both lists to place both the fossil and an overlay. In vanilla, the fossil is used for the bones and the overlay is used for the coal. There's also a fossil processors, which is a resource name of a processor list, and an overlay processors, which is the same. These are used in vanilla for fossils to degrade and also to replace the coal with deep slate diamonds. Finally, fossils now have a field called Max Empty Corners Allowed. The placement of the fossil will abort if there are more empty corners of the bounding box of the structure that it's trying to place than the value in this field. An empty space here is defined as containing nothing but air or a fluid. Let's talk about changes to height maps. All of the height map decorators, except the ones called Height Map and Height Map Spread Double, have been removed. That is because height maps now have a configuration field for which height map to use. There's also a new height map checker, which is called height map with water threshold, and that checks height map water depth at the location and fully discards the placement of the feature if it's above the set threshold. That is used for trees, so let's talk about trees. Trees no longer have a height map and max water depth field. Instead, they use height map decorators and the water threshold decorator. Trees also have two new fields. They are dirt provider, which is a block state provider for the dirt under the lowest log in a tree, and force dirt, which is a boolean which, when turned on, forces replacement of that block even if it is already a type of dirt. Leaves provider field has also been renamed and is now called foliage provider. There's a new trunk placer type. It is called bending. In addition to the normal trunk placer parameters, it also has a min height for leaves integer field and a uniform int called bend length. There's a new foliage placer type as well, it is called random spread. In addition to the normal parameters, it also has foliage height and leaf placement attempts, they are both integers. Let's talk about a new decorator type, it is called cave surface. What this decorator does is unsurprisingly to find a cave surface. That is, if the incoming position is in air, it will try to find a surface of the right type, up or down, depending on which type of surface you're looking for. That is decided by a field in the configuration called surface. The value here is either floor or ceiling. It also has another field that is floor to ceiling search range, which is how far it will try to search to find the surface. There's also a new block state provider type that is called randomize int state provider. This state provider takes another state provider, takes the resulting block state of that, and randomizes a property on that block state. It has a source field, which is the source block state provider, a property field, which is the name of the block state property to randomize, and a values field, which is a uniform integer selection for what values to set. Let's talk about the new feature types. There is a new feature type called Growing Plant. This basically places a pillar of blocks with the top or bottom block being a different block. It has a direction field which is which direction it grows. It could be any direction but is in vanilla used up or down. There are two block state providers. There's a body provider and a head provider. The body provider provides all of the blocks except the last final one and the head provider provides the final block in the column. It also has a height distribution field, which is a weighted list of uniform ints used to pick a height. That means a first randomization will be done to pick a distribution to then pick a value from. If you need an example of these things, the cave vines used in lush caves are a growing plant feature using a cave surface decorator for the ceiling and a randomized in state provider to randomize the vine age of the head block. Big drip leaves are also growing plant features that grow upwards instead of down. Another new feature type is called Vegetation Patch. This is a fairly complex one with a big configuration. 
What it does is places a patch of ground blocks by replacing currently available ground blocks and then optionally places a bunch of features on top of those ground blocks it placed. It has a surface field that decides whether blocks get placed downwards into the floor or upwards into the ceiling. The size of the patch is a rectangle and X and Z values of that are randomized from the uniform int specified in XZ radius, with extra blocks sometimes sticking out if you have a random chance set. That random chance is called extra edge column chance and it is a float value between 0 and 1. There are three fields controlling the verticality of the feature. It is vertical range, which decides how much the feature can wander up or down slopes from the initial placement position. It also has a depth, which sets the number of blocks into the ground to place. And an extra button block chance, which is a chance between 0 and 1 of putting an additional block of depth. It has a replaceable field that is a resource name of a block tag, and that tag is used to determine which blocks are valid for this feature to replace. It has a ground state field, which is a block state provider, which provides the ground to place. And then finally, it has two fields controlling the vegetation that gets placed on top. They are vegetation chance, which is a chance between 0 and 1, for every surface level ground block that gets placed to have a feature placed above it, and a vegetation feature, which is a reference to a configured feature for which feature to place. Another new very related feature type is waterlogged vegetation patch. It is extremely similar to vegetation patch and actually uses exactly the same configuration. But instead of just generating a patch of ground, it tries to waterlog its non-edge surface blocks. It will then only place features in those waterlogged blocks, and then after placing that feature, it will try to re-waterlog those blocks. Our final new feature is another pretty meaty one, it is called Root System. What it does is places a system of blocks going upward until it finds free space, and then places another feature there. It also then decorates the surface where it started with another block. In vanilla this is used to create the azalea tree root systems with hanging roots underneath and an azalea tree above. It has a number of fields controlling the system of roots going upwards. They are root radius for the radius of the root blocks to place upwards, the root column max height which specifies essentially how far to search before giving up while traversing upwards. Root placement attempts will specify how many attempts to find a suitable space for a root block. Root replaceable, which is the resource name of a block tag that determines which blocks can be replaced by roots. Root state provider, which is a block state provider for the roots to place. And required vertical space for tree, which is the amount of vertical space free that is sufficient to stop the search and then place the tree feature. The tree feature itself is another configured feature, it is specified in the feature field. Finally, there are a bunch of fields relating to the hanging roots to place, which is hanging roots radius, which is the radius of the hanging root placements, hanging roots vertical span, which is how far up or down to try to place those hanging roots, hanging root state provider, which is a block state provider for those hanging roots to place, and finally, hanging root placement attempts, which is how many attempts to find a suitable space for those hanging root blocks. Whew. Those new features are used to implement every single thing that you see in the new Lush Caves biomes. Another changed feature is the simple block feature. It now uses a block state provider instead of a specified block state. But not only have the Lush Caves been added, this also has a number of impacts on the vanilla feature definitions. And there is a lot of updates there, mostly for all of the trees that need to correspond to the new format, but also for anything using height map decorators which now have the new configuration. I won't be going through all of those because, oh boy, that would take forever, but I will give you some highlights of the added things. Of course, there is a new Lush Caves biome definition. There are new vanilla configured features for the Lush Caves and they are Azalea Tree, Rooted Azalea Tree, Cave Vine, Cave Vine in Moss, Cave Vines, Classic Vines Cave Feature, Clay Pool with Drip Leaves, Clay with Drip Leaves, Drip Leaf, Lush Caves Clay, Lush Caves Vegetation, Lush Caves Ceiling Vegetation, Moss Patch, Moss Patch Ceiling, Moss Vegetation, or Clay 
and Spore Blossom. And there are changes to other vanilla configure features as well. Swamp Tree has been split into two files. One of them is Swamp Oak, which is one tree, and then Trees underscore Swamp, which is the placed trees with decorators. Fossil configured feature has been removed and it is replaced with Fossil Upper and Fossil Lower. And these use three new processor lists. They are Fossil Rot, Fossil Coal and Fossil Diamonds. That was quite the info dump. I suggest that you go look up the vanilla data files and explore them, try things out and tinker with this to see how things work. Of course, as usual, the link to those definition files is available in the video description. That's everything for the technical news in Minecraft Snapshot 21 W10A. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this useful, please help me out in return, leave a like and share it to an equally nerdy friend. And why not leave a comment down below? This really helps me out in my quest to reach 50,000 subscribers. If you want to stay up to date, well, there's both a gameplay video and a technical video for every new snapshot, pre-release, release candidate or full release of Minecraft. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel if that sounds like an interesting thing to you. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when the videos are done. And after all that, it really is time to wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Celeste Lame, and I'll see you next time.